wiring a DC to DC charger with ferrules and pins. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Wolfgrid and in this episode I'm going to talk about a best practice and a safe way of wiring in your cables into a, a DC to DC charger like this uh, Victron 12 to 12 volt 30 amp. Uh, this is a non-isolated. I'm going to take you through some ins and outs and some best practice around uh, wiring these in. So let's just start with the the challenge. Right now we have this nice and out in the open. You can see it clearly. You can see the positive in, positive out and the uh, the ground or negative in the middle. And you can see where the connectors go and it's really easy to figure out how you'd actually get this wire in, get all the strands in, that sort of thing. But invariably what happens is that this thing is mounted upright like that. You can mount it upside down if you want to, but uh, most people don't really like that. Uh, so they like it upright like that against inside a locker against one of the vertical walls. You have to do it this way in order to uh, let the uh, convection work. So it's got to be mounted there and then it can cool by convection. You can't mount it this way or that way anywhere because then the convection simply doesn't work. Or this way as well doesn't work, doesn't cool down. So it's got to be that way or that way. Now assuming that you've mounted it in a locker this way, the uh, challenge you have is that you can't actually see under there to connect your cables. So one way is to obviously connect everything and then mount it against the wall. But invariably we've mounted it, it's nice and snug, and then we start connecting in all the cables. And here the problem you have is, so say with this, this the Vectron uh, 30 amp DC DCs take a maximum of a 16 uh, millimeter squared cable, which is what this is. And so <clears throat> let's say we make sure it's nice and open. There we are. Um, now, invariably, if you're just going to stick this in, uh, you notice, if you check the close-up, you'll notice there are a few strands of copper, three or four, that haven't actually gone in. That's pretty easy to uh, come into contact with uh, the negative next door. So you'd have some real problems if that actually happened. And bear in mind, again, that you're doing it in a locker, it's like this, you can't actually see under there and unless you use some sort of camera, you're not going to see that you have this uh, problem. So the best practice is that you should either use uh, ferrules or pins. So I'm going to cover a pin first. So basically this is a 16 mil pin and if you've um, bared a nice section of your cable, you can do this so that it's really controlled and make sure that you get every single strand inside. So that's the pin done nicely. One of the things that we find with uh, many of these pins is the pins are bigger than the cable. So if you were to use a 16 mil crimp uh, on this, uh, you'd be able to tug it off by hand, probably. So what we do is we go one size down, as you can see, this is a 10 mil. And uh, so what we do is you put that in, uh, make sure that's tight, uh, close this up, and you're not going to go very tight. So let's, and do that. This is actually really solid. In, in, in the sense that you can't tug this off. It has, it doesn't look that nice, to be honest, but the crimp itself is pretty good. So we've used a 10 mil crimp on a 16 mil pin with the cable. Uh, what we do to neaten this up typically is we take <clears throat> a bit of heat shrink onto there, and that just helps secure things and also reduces the probability of, uh, why am I putting black on? I should be putting red on. It reduces the sort of area and if you happen to have a strand sticking out here by mistake, then your uh, heat shrink will, especially you bring it down and bring it up to just catch all of the strands and put it about there. This pin now goes really neatly into there. You, you can, if you're putting double cables, uh, these pins are quite good for double cables because you can put one uh, facing this way and put another one in facing the other way 
and the two of them actually fit in really snugly but you can actually tighten the cables really really well. So this is one method is to use a pin and once you've got this under there uh, you know once the pin goes in you know that uh, it's nice and snug. There are no strands knocking about. Uh, there's no possibility of this touching against one of these uh, that are close by. <clears throat> one of the things that people uh, find is that these connectors are actually quite close to each other. It would have been good if they'd spaced them out a little bit more. But anyway, this is what you have. And, and you have a, a negative with two positives, you know, one on either side. So you, you've got two places where you can touch. Now with these pins, there's no probability of that. They they sit nice and snug and um, no with a heat shrink on there, no possibility that you're going to uh, contact the things in the side. Now I am going to show you what our preference is. So we, we do like pins and we use them from time to time. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, invariably the pins are bigger than the cable. And so you have to use a, a smaller die uh, and one of the reasons for that is that uh, there's this mix of um, millimeter-based uh, cable versus American wire gauge, AWG, and uh, they take so sort of the AWG equivalent and just stamp on that that's now 16 mil or something like that. So sometimes you can get the, the exact snug fit for a pin and cable combination, uh, but invariably it's quite difficult to get that. So this is what our preference is actually. So I've got a bunch of ferrules here just to show you. So this is a small uh, nylon-based pin as well. It's a, it's similar to this one, just for a much smaller cable. Uh, we've got various sizes here. It goes up to a maximum of uh, 10 mil. So this is 16 mil cable, so I, I couldn't use this on here. But this is really great for 10 mil and less. You find, you put your, your uh, bed uh, strands into there and that then pushes them nicely down into uh, the ferrule so it works really well. But the one that we do use it comes from uh, this set here you can get these they're fairly inexpensive and uh, the quality is absolutely fine. This is a 16 mil ferrule so you, you go you know, very very carefully and make sure that you get all the strands in. Uh, in this particular case we we won't use a heat shrink, no need for it. Uh, so you're gonna make sure that all of the strands are, are nicely in. And it doesn't matter if this is slightly longer or shorter, you're probably gonna nip the end off anyway. So push that in. You, you would have noticed that this doesn't actually fit in there. Uh, the, the round ferrule doesn't go into this connector. So you need to get a ferrule crimp. This is what this is. Just by the way, you need the four-sided crimp. You get six-sided and four-sided. The six-sided, often a bit bigger, so it can cope with uh, bigger cables. But this particular one, uh, you can even see it's in AWG, so it's 28 to 5 AWG. So this, it fits in nice and snug. So bring it to the end and crimp it onto here. So that's made a nice, nice square. There are no strands sticking out. And what I'll do typically here is just take the end bit. I'm just going to do it into something so that I don't have strands all over my desk. So I want about that much. I'm just going to cut the rest off. Make this a bit square again. So that should work really well. Again, put that into there. Uh, you may need to get it nice and square, but this has gone in. As you can see, it's gone right in. Nice. If I tighten this up. And then it's really nice and snug. So that, we had three, your three cables coming in here. That is really snug. The only disadvantage of this approach that I can think of is that if you want to have more than just these cables, so if you want to double up on the cables, you can't actually use these ferrules. Or if you want to combine uh, the ferrule or the cable with, say, a much thinner cable, say, a battery master or something like that, um, it's difficult to do that, in which case you might want to use the pins rather. Uh, so it's absolutely fine to use the pins. But this, if you all you're doing is putting a 16 mil cable, uh, this this works pretty well. So with with these uh, uh, 10 mil 
ferals. Uh, you'd use again the uh, the feral crimper, and you could crimp the whole lot in one go. You can see it's it's nice and flush over there, and it's right against there. So you just need to crimp once, and that's the whole thing. And if if you find this is too long, which we don't, uh, this is quite a nice length to go into connectors. You you just leave it as it is. So that's for a 10 mil cable, as I mentioned, you bear a little bit more, rather have this sticking out a bit and then chop the ends off than have it a bit short, then it, it goes really nicely. We'll include links in the description below on where you can buy these tools, so in, in particular the feral crimper, uh, even the uh, the main hydraulic crimper, and uh, where you can buy both these these style ferals as well as these these ferals here. And uh, if you're interested, we have a comprehensive article, a resource on our website that explains in quite a lot of detail the installation of a DC to DC charger. And this video is a, a bit of an accompaniment to that because there we do mention uh, the, the wisdom of using ferals or the best practice of using ferals. And so, uh, yeah, love it if you go and have a look at that article and give us some feedback on that too. Right, so hopefully, uh, that's useful and uh, love to have your comments and uh, remember to subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.